one key sentence that manifests to us that we do what we do to promote choice, innovation, and opportunities on the internet. Um, that's really why we're going stuff on mobile right now, because we could just lay back and do something else that is easier. Um, but we have this idea and we want to we want to improve the situation on mobile. I'm saying improving because it's already a great thing. Um, we all use smartphones, we all use tablets um, a lot and it was not the case six years ago. You could not install apps it, or it was rather a bad experience. There was not a lot of choice and a lot of developers but that that changed when the iPhone came out and, and Android followed. But there's some issues with this current world. Um, what if you buy uh, an, Android ta uh, an Android phone but also an iPad? You can't share apps between those two devices. You need to find them uh, in every store. You need to buy them again uh, if, if it's not a free app. Um, maybe the developer only works on one platform, so you're stuck with something worse or nothing. Um, and, and actually that's something the players actually rely on. Because if you buy a, a, an iPhone right now, when you switch to another device, when this one is done and, and broken, you're going to buy an iPhone again because you don't want to start your mobile life again. Um, there's also a problem with the app stores. Um, it's, it's a few companies that decide exactly which apps you're going to be able to run. Uh, I'm not going to quote, but there's a lot of examples of perfectly good apps that have been rejected of app stores or even books that have been removed uh, from other stores. So that's not good um, because mobile is going to be, well, I'm saying mobile. Um, we're not just using computers, we're using all types of devices and we can't let all the digital life that we have be controlled by a few companies. And if you're a developer, you need to hire or train uh, everyone at your company for all the platforms. So uh, iPhone, Android, maybe Blackberry, maybe Windows Phone. Maybe you're not going to look at those two that I mentioned because it's they don't have enough market share for you to look at. So that's, that's not a good thing and Mozilla is trying to do something about it. Um, and it's pretty easy what we chose as a, as a platform to help with this idea. Um, the web is already pretty powerful, so it works on every device pretty much. Um, well, people are creating mobile apps in HTML5 already. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm saying HTML5 because that's the easiest way to say. Um, it works on every device. It also uh, doesn't ask you, you, need, you don't need to ask before creating something. You can distribute however you want and there's no restrictions on that part. And, um, and there's also already a lot of websites that look like app and behave like app. And, like, I know that a lot of people use Gmail as their main mail client. Um, so, so, yes, there's already a lot of power in that platform. But there's a few things missing. So we'd like to improve that part. So you don't have access or, uh, right now to all the, all the hardware that you can find on a, on a device. Uh, there's also some limitations on, um, um, I'm having a blank, uh, <laughs> limitations on hardware and, um, and um, accessing the rest of the system, sorry. Uh, we need um, also a, a, way, a better way to communicate between apps. Uh, you've all seen the, uh, all the share buttons that populate, uh, pollute websites, so Twitter, Facebook. Um, if we had a better system to just say, I want sh to share something, then uh, it would be a better world where apps don't have to know about each other. And we also need a distribution system so that you can install apps and that they don't just look like, don't just live in a browser and look like web apps. They need to look like native apps. 
So the first topic, uh, letting you access to more stuff. Uh, there's this effort that we call Web APIs. So it lets you access the hardware through JavaScript. It's currently a standardization effort, so um, some of the APIs are already implemented in different browsers. Uh, some, in, some APIs are just implemented in Mozilla uh, products. Uh, but we are committed to make that uh, um, something that everyone can rely on in a, in a browser and in a platform. So you could check this wiki with all the web APIs. What it looks like, um, so accessing the battery. Um, pretty easy. Um, there's a new battery property on the navigator object. You have events when uh, something about the battery changes and you have access to the charge and the level currently uh, on, the, on the device. Uh, this is actually implemented in, on desktop too because that, that's also something you'd like to know. And it's already implemented in WebKit by Samsung, I guess. Um, so this one is a fairly reliable uh, API. Another one that only makes sense on, on, on a mobile device for now. Uh, you can know if you are close or not to the device. So if you are a communication app, you can turn off the screen uh, if, if it happens. Um, and I've also seen someone on Saturday use this sensor to uh, control a music app. So if you hold your hand above the phone, it's going to pause. And, uh, and if you move that way, it will uh, go to the next one. So that's more than just turning off the screen. Device orientation is another one. You get um, the angles, uh, how the phone is actually um, uh, oriented in the space. And let me show you a bit how that looks. So I'm using uh, an app that does screenshots of the phone that I have with me right now. So it's going to be laggy, but that's just because it's sending a lot of screenshots. The device is actually pretty OK. Um, so this is Firefox OS running on the phone. Everything you see on this screen is, and yes, it's turning off, uh, is, uh, is done with HTML. The infrastructure that we have is just a Linux kernel with Gecko, the rendering engine, on top of it. And then all the UI is done in JavaScript and CSS. So you can see the, my current um, mobile carrier. You can see the battery level. You can see the Wi-Fi signal, stuff like that. So I'm unlocking the device and going to this small demo app. Oh, OK. It was loaded. Um, yes, even though that won't work. Um, so again, the battery level, but you're not interested in that. Uh, the small far message, uh, if I put my hand over the device, it changes to near what I explained to you just before. Um, on the, so I'm not using the geolocation because we are in a boat and there's no GPS reaching us. Um, you can see a small device on the right. If I move the phone, and it will move to, yeah. <laughs> but if I move it, um, I can use the orientation to, um, to position the phone. I also have a small timer. Um, so if I'm going to leave the app. And when the timer will reach zero, it's sending me a notification. So even though you're not in the browser, um, you can receive events. Uh, you can send notifications, sorry. There's a vibration API. It's useless to show it to you because you need a device in the end. Um, you can also, I'm going to reserve that for later. Um, you can also go full screen. Again, that's an API that is available on, um, on the desktop. So when I go full screen, um, there's a new CSS pseudo class that is available, and I can change the UI. And so that could be um, um, mode where 
you could turn your phone into your, that kind of mode with only uh, the battery and the and the time. Um, so that's pretty much everything I had to show you about web APIs for now. A particular API that we created and then right now is not, uh, we don't know what the standardization process will tell us because uh, Google is trying um, to push the idea of web intents. We'll, we think web activities is, is a better way to do it. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, the idea for most activity is that apps shouldn't know about each other. So if what you want is just an image, you shouldn't ask um, the gallery app. You should, ask, you should only ask, I need an image. And every app that is installed on the phone can tell you, I know how to share an image, and I'm going to give one to you. So if we are in the app that requests an image, you just uh, create this most activity object with uh, with the name of what we're trying to do, the kind of um, the kind of um, object you're trying to get. So here I'm only asking for JPEG images. Uh, the user will see all the apps that can handle that activity, and then when and go in one of them, work on the image. Maybe resize. Um, maybe he's going on Flickr and looking through tags, etc. Uh, and then you get um, you get back a blob in the bottom of the screen. Sorry for the people in the back. And with that, you can do anything you'd like. Um, say putting it uh, in an image. And where is the rest? Okay. Yeah. There was one problem with the presentation. Okay. Yes, sorry for that. Um, so yes, if you are an app that wants to declare that you can uh, you can handle some activities. Um, so you have something to declare in the manifest. Uh, I'll talk to you about. I'll talk to you about the manifest a bit later. But in the the code of the app, uh, you can declare uh, a callback with the most set message handler. So as you can see, this is not standardized. Um, uh, for this particular activity, you'll receive several blobs uh, if you ask for images. You can. You can say I only want one or several. Um, once you get that blob, um, sorry, the app that is talking to you can send you blobs. Um, for this case, uh, to pick an image, you you don't need anything. You just need. You already know that you're gonna uh, send an send an image back. Um, so you can do some things like if it's Flickr. Um, Showing all the images of a user, and um, once he has selected one, you can post it back uh, with the post result uh, method. Um, so, <laughs> sending a blob or sending a message, depending on the kind of activity. And that's where I go back to the device and show you how it works. So, again, the same demo app. Uh, if I push the take a picture button, I have all the apps installed on the phone that know how to give me an image. So wallpaper, gallery, and camera. I use camera and say cheese, please. Ooh. And as you can see, this is a this is code from today, so I have a bug. That's okay. And Instagram, yay. Um, let me think about another one. Um, yeah, I called myself earlier. If I type a number, 
that is completely fake. Uh, when I when I push the add with a plus, uh, I can add a contact. And this is not a web activity, sorry. But it's the same mechanism. Anyway, you get the idea, I guess. So now that you have more power into your apps, you need to distribute them in a good way. So the manifest I told you about earlier. Uh, so just take your website that you have currently, uh, add this small JSON file on your server, um, and this can turn any website into an app. So nothing exceptional about this, uh, except the last line, uh, which um, aimed at the fact that we are not going to be on a single marketplace. So you can specify uh, with the installs allowed from uh, key if you want to be installed from anywhere or just your website or a few marketplaces. Once you have this manifest file, you can submit it to a marketplace, but you can also install from your website. So um, we have this Moz app, Moz apps API that takes um, that as an install method. You give the manifest that I showed you just before, and uh, if the user says yes, I want to install, you have an unsuccess callback and an error in the other case. Um, so going back to this little demo, um, in a browser, not a marketplace. And if I press install, it tries to reach the manifest. And um, and I'm a bad uh, author because I didn't specify a size or my name. But I can click install. The demo is installed. The, on my screen over there, and whoops. And if I open it, I have the same, um, the same website slash app, running, it on its own, and it looks like a regular app, no browser UI. So, going back to this, uh, this is important if you're um, a newspaper, for example and you already have a mechanism to, um, to uh, choose uh, if your subscribers, if your visitors are subscribers or free visitors, uh, you don't have to go through our system to pay us or you don't have to get an authorization if it's a newspaper for adults or anything. So, um, but it's important because most of the companies that are actually uh, providing those marketplaces are American, and the sensibility around um, um, around that is not exactly the same as is, as in every country. So we're going to create one because marketplace is actually a good thing. Uh, it helps to um, discover apps. Uh, you get ratings, reviews, stuff like that. So it's it's not a bad thing. But uh, we think there's, we need more than one marketplace. If you go buy a pair of shoes, um, you're not going to go in one store. You're going to go in, um, in, a, in a generic store that sells a lot of different shoes, or maybe um, a store that is for uh, uh, runners, because that's the kind of shoes that you want right now, and you need better advices. So this is something that we need to replicate on, on the on the mobile um, ecosystem. So yeah, if, if Valve, for example, creates a marketplace uh, for games, it will be way better than any other marketplace when you need a game, because the reviews are going to be tailored for, by game, uh, are going to be submitted by gamers and not my mom, uh, because I know that she has not good taste in games. Um, so I didn't talk that much about Firefox OS because 
this concept already works on Firefox for Android, and if you haven't tried it, you should. Um, because we're, we're doing this Firefox OS stuff just to show the way for the rest of the industry. We'd like to see any other mobile uh, uh, manufacturer do the same stuff and so that we can live in a world where um, you only have to learn one um, set of technologies to work on any platform. So um, resources, if you want to learn more, we have the MDN um, website, Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, I hope you already know about it because there's a lot of open, um, a lot of web standards that are documented over there. So we have a we have a category for Firefox OS. Um, the Axe uh, blog has a lot of um, stories and and tutorials around any uh, any uh, technology that we created for that. And obviously, the marketplace also has resources if you if you'd like to submit an app. Um, and that's about it. I'll be around tonight because uh, someone asked me to make uh, a power drone um, work from a Firefox OS. So I'll try to do that. And uh, I have two phones with me. So if you'd like to see uh, this a bit closer, uh, you can come talk to me. Thank you.